Warwick McKibben, welcome to the programme. Good to be here, Sarah. I read a headline in the London Financial Times this afternoon. It says, Australia launches review of, quote, embarrassing central bank. Now, you wanted a review of the Reserve Bank. Did you want it in these circumstances? Oh, well, I don't think it's embarrassing. I think the bank has done a very good job. My major concern was whether the bank was fit for purpose as we look forward over the next 10 to 20 years of the, the state of the world economy. It's a very different world to when the Reserve Bank was originally conceived. Um, will the review panel be focusing on the statement by Philip Lowe last year uh, saying that the bank wouldn't raise interest rates before 2024, which, as we know, encouraged people to borrow money and further fueled the housing boom? Will that be a focus? I don't think it'll be a focus. It'll come up because I think one of the aspects that's important is to learn from past errors rather than to criticise. It was a very difficult set of circumstances that the bank was operating. And uh, they did, in their, to their credit, say that they couldn't see a case where the rates would rise, but they didn't actually sell the message very clearly. Communication was a problem. Um, a lot of people trusted in what Philip Lowe said at that time. Does that indicate notwithstanding the difficulty of the circumstances, that there's a serious problem with the bank's judgment, with his judgment, or with both? No, I don't think so. I think the, the messaging was not quite the way I would have done it. In a world of uncertainty, you should make it very clear how uncertain the world is. Uh, a central bank's policy works because of credibility. If you start to lose credibility, then the effectiveness of policy starts to diminish, and that's the problem we face at the moment. Um, Philip Lowe said in a speech today that the bank had made a mistake by lowering interest rates too far, contributing to inflation. Should that also be a key part of the inquiry, notwithstanding what you say about looking forward? Well, I think the, actually, I think the rates should have been lowered where they were lowered. My concern is that they should have been rising well before they started to increase them. The modelling we did on the pandemic at the very beginning suggested the economy would bounce and therefore the, the injection of fiscal and monetary policy needed to be withdrawn much more quickly than it was. So this does go to central questions of judgment, though, doesn't it, of the, of the board and the governor himself? No, I think I disagree. I think this is really about uh, fixing the governance structure for future events. I think it's about whether the mandate that the bank's operating under of inflation targeting is really the right mandate. And I think it's about how you deal with accountability in a very transparent way. Does it also mean that there's a question around the makeup of the individuals on the board and their range of expertise? I think definitely. One of the problems you have is the bank was constructed with the board being representatives from different parts of society. The problem with that model is that they have sectoral interests and when in fact monetary policy is about national interests. And so you can never reveal what they say or how they vote because that would be inconsistent with acting in the national interest versus their own particular sector. So I think you have to have expertise on the board and it has to be transparent where you say how you vote, why you think you vote uh, is, is in a particular way. And you have to have a public debate about the uncertainty that's actually always at the board table, even though the bank presents a single view to their society. Is there an argument for expanding the board to include someone like Sally McManus from the ACTU? No, I think not, because again, uh, she'd be acting in her own self-interest of her union members rather than the national interest if her opinion was actually made public. So I think it's a mistake. I think we should have a mix of experts with business experience, but also uh, academic and uh, other uh, financial experience. I think the number of board members is correct. I don't think the Secretary of Treasury should be a voting member. They should be in the room, but they should not be uh, having a vote because that's a conflict of interest with the political process. Um Yesterday, the deputy governor said that as a whole, households are in a fairly good position to withstand the consequences of further rate rises. Again, in terms of that assertion, when we don't know where rates will go and we are clearly living in volatile times, is that the right message to be sending? Well, I think that's a message to, to make sure that the, peop that the society knows that the financial system is in very good shape. When you have the volatility that you've just mentioned and when you have interest rates and inflation moving around, uh, people will become concerned about the stability of the financial system. I think the Australian financial system is in a very good place. Uh, unfortunately, the people who the, will be impacted at the margin will be quite a large number of them and they're the members of the community that can least have, uh, afford the sort of uh, increases in costs that are coming on top of the inflation um, that we're seeing in food prices and energy. Warwick McKibben, thank you very much indeed for your time and expertise this evening. Happy to be here, Sarah. Thank you.